Hello world, my name is Tim Roswick and welcome to another video on this wonderful channel. Uh, today we're going to be talking about progression systems, specifically the progression system in my game, Philophobia, which comes out February 10th on Steam. Make sure you wish list it down below. I would love it if you did. Get it. Love. Demonic. Hell. Fear of love. All that stuff. Anyway, uh, so what I'm going to talk about is, is when I launched on the Itch version last year, I didn't have time to build any sort of progression in the game. And I want to kind of show you the difference between that and the progression system that's in the Steam version and why. I think it's good and why I think it works okay so we're gonna go through it if I go ahead and hit continue here uh, you'll see this little deal now I'm gonna ignore this for now we'll come back to this in just a second but I want to kind of show you the the feeling of the game before that was in there so originally you would go through this little uh, game and I'm gonna ignore some stuff you know you're gonna have to experience all this yourself there's plenty of stuff to explore and experience in the game uh, but it was a very linear game. Like you see, I'm running through the game. I'm just kind of like jumping around and it like nothing's wrong with it, right? Like as a coherent single experience, it's fine. The problem comes like, let's say, okay, I'm done for the game for now. I want to come back to it later, right? When I resume, I resume right here. And so I loaded the game. It's the next day. I got home from work, whatever it is. It's a different day and I'm like, okay, okay, I, I get, I'm here, but like, okay, I gotta beat the level, right? But the number one complaint I got about the game was like, I don't know how many more levels are in this section. I don't, I don't know how long it is before I get to the boss. I don't, I don't know how far I am in the game, right? Like a lot of these things came up and it, it got me thinking like, wow, okay, so like part of... Part of the game experience is not just the game itself, but knowing where you're at in terms of like where the game is. Like if you ever pause the video, pause Netflix or pause YouTube or something just to see how much time is left, right? Like, cause you're curious, you just want to know like where you're at in context of like the game. And that's where the progression system comes in. So one of the things I built for the, the Steam version was this uh, wonderful realm select and level select system. So. Uh, when you continue the game, you, you can pick a realm, right? And these realms are all different in different ways. Uh, it's, the game is based on the five stages of grief. So we've got denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and uh, surprise for you people that play the game. Um, so one, you know, like where you're at in, in terms of like worlds, right? But then you've also got a percentage on each one. So you kind of know like how complete each version, each section is. And then you've also, it, it tells you about the things in the world and where you're at like globally. So this is another thing that the original version didn't do really do well is nobody knew what these were. Like they didn't, the, first of all, hard effects is kind of clever, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm proud of that. But uh, now it tells you how many you got, right? There's one in every single level and it tells you how many you got globally. And then Lost Souls were in the original game too, but because the game didn't make it clear that they were there and the game didn't tell you how many there were people didn't go hunting for them like there there are some lost souls in the original game that that people never found because the game doesn't tell you that they're there right so when you go into a section let's say denial is the first section then you look at all the levels right and as you highlight a level the information changes it tells you the time it took you to beat the game how many deaths you had the name of the game uh, and then it also tells you a bunch of realm specific information so uh, on each one of these, there's actually a little hard effect counter, uh, as you can see. So like, it'll tell you if you have the hard effect for that level, but it doesn't tell you where the lost souls are. And that's intentional. The hard effects are designed to be this, this thing that if you're really good at the game, a lot of these are in hard to reach spots. So if, if you get it, that means you went the extra mile to like actually get there. And a lot of them are very tricky. They'll end up in deaths and it's hard to get. Uh, they do stay after you die though. So you only have to get them once. Uh, and whereas the lost souls are more for the explorers, right? Uh, maybe the people that aren't super great at the hardcore platforming of the game, but they want to like explore and find the cool stuff, right? And now every section has six lost souls that you have to go through these levels and find it. It doesn't tell you specifically what levels they're in. Uh, and that's intentional because I want you to kind of explore now, just, just this little piece of it, right? Just, just this, this, Imagine this is the only thing I added to the game. This makes the game feel so much bigger. It adds so much to the game. And 
that brings me to my first point is like the progression system one of the things it does that's fantastic is it shows the player how much game there is right normally in in the normal version of philophobia in the in the old version like you didn't you didn't know you didn't know and as a result the game seemed smaller because there was no way to tell like where you're at how much more there is where you are in relation to the bosses how many like you know what i mean like you couldn't tell so this shows the player how much content is there for them to play and that's what makes it really really cool the second thing it does is it gives them more hours per dollar right if somebody's gonna buy this game they're gonna be like okay well i you know i'm gonna get some entertainment value out of it how much this tells them hey you've got a lot here you got a lot of hours for your dollar here before they never really knew <laughs> it was just like okay well i guess i'll continue uh you know uh whatever in addition to that like like i said it it's it's kind of confusing and it's kind of demotivating in a way when you don't know how much farther you have to go and it can kind of seem not repetitive but it can seem like you don't know where you're going and i think something like this is really really important the third point is and this comes up with speedrunners a lot is is you can play what you want right before when you had to go through the game linearly uh it was it was complicated because <laughs> what if you really like a certain level like there's a couple levels on anger that are like speedrunners really like to play this stuff right and uh it it can get very tricky to play some some levels oh that's a bug we found a bug but <laughs> forget the bugs uh, speedrunners can, uh, we had to find a bug, right? This is a game development channel. If, if we didn't find a bug while I was making a video, it would be, it would be stupid. Um, but they can play the content they want. So, so different people like different levels and speedrunners especially like to, um, practice certain levels over and over again. Uh, they like to beat their time, right? And, and that's cool. And they can play the content that they want. There's a lot of very specific experience in this game that are designed for, a certain emotion like uh anger there's a lot of anger stuff bargaining there's a lot of puzzly stuff uh depression there's a lot of like not horror but designed to like fuck you over kind of deal uh so if once players beat the game they can kind of play whatever they want because it's all unlocked and and the last the last point last not four, point number four is this just feels good it feels better it feels more complete um I didn't realize it because of the chaos of all the stuff going down last year. I just, I had to finish the game and I was just focused on just getting it finished. I didn't realize how much a system like this would add to the game and I didn't realize how important it, it actually uh, became, but now that it's here, like, I wonder how the game, how the game ever didn't have this, you know? Like, how did we ever do this without, <laughs> without that game? Anyway, those are the four reasons why I think progression is important. If you haven't wishlisted Philophobia on Steam, I recommend you do. Link's down below. Launches February 10th. February 10th. That's next week. Please, wishlist to get, get by my game. Buy my, <laughs> buy my game. Uh, I love you all. Thank you so much for watching this video. You guys are amazing. And I will see you in the next one.